We will talk today about the epidemiology of specific viral outbreaks in hospital setting. The next virus is varicella virus causing chicken box. So chicken box is caused by varicella zoster virus and uh, it's called also uh, chicken box or varicella. It is very contagious disease and secondary attack rate is approximately 80%. So if we have uh, a group of people, people uh, uh, exposed to a patient and they are not immune by vaccine before, they can 80% of them can get uh, the disease. It is transmitted from patients with either varicella or herpes zoster, and they are two different forms of the disease. Uh, once a chicken box has resolved, the virus may remain inactive in the nerve cell. Later on, when immunity decreases, uh, maybe in older age or when a patient get immunocompromised, 10 to 20 percent of this patient have the virus uh, activated again, causing the second version of the disease, which is called herpes zoster. Both varicella and herpes zoster were responsible for hospital outbreak among healthcare workers and sometimes among patients. The patient likely to get uh, herpes zoster and varicella in the hospital are immunocompromised patients like transplant patients like hemodialysis patients and so on. Uh, for the symptoms and the clinical picture, it is different from chicken box or varicella and the shingles uh, or herpes zoster. Uh, for the chicken box or varicella, the classic symptom is the rash. So the rash is pyloritic, so uh, like itchy, and it, uh, sometimes it's itchy, and it, uh, it has several stages. Rash, macule, babule, vesicle, then the vesicle burst, and the crust dry and fall down. Uh, within one to two days of the rash, we get the symptoms of fever, malaise, loss of appetite, and headache. Some people who have been vaccinated can have uh, like uh, milder disease. Uh, for shingles, you have painful skin rash with blisters in localized area at uh, that follows uh, a dermatome. Dermatome means uh, the area of the rash uh, is uh, is surveyed or um, uh, uh, covered by a single or uh, one or two uh, nerves, uh, and that's called dermatome. So the body uh, is um, uh, is divided into different dermatomes according to the nerves. Uh, the problem of shingles it happened in people with immunocompromised uh, if having when people with immunocompromised status it can disseminate the and cause disseminated shingles with which it can cause uh, uh, death in some times and this photo clearly show the clinical picture of uh, varicella and uh, herpes zoster for uh, varicella as you see uh, this is physical this is maybe macule, this is rash, uh, this is dried uh, uh, rash. So different stages you see on the same time, this is like uh, begin to crust here, uh, it will, it will uh, fall down. But on the right side, there is um, uh, shingles. Uh, and as you see, it affects certain area uh, on the back that is covered by the same nerve and it follow the same uh, uh, yeah, anatomical uh, position uh, of the nerve coverage. Diagnosis by sign and symptoms, as well as using PCR tests for detecting varicella zoster uh, virus, uh, or positive immunoglobulin G ELISA uh, to indicate the antibodies against herpes zoster virus. It is very contagious disease, as we said, and can infect up to 80% of unvaccinated uh, people exposed to the patient. Uh, the virus is spread uh, by direct contact, inhalation of aerosol, so it is airborne uh, disease, but also direct disease by skin-to-skin -skin, uh, contact or uh, contact with the lesions, so it, uh, it, it, it is spread, uh, it is spreading by both inhalation and by contact transmission. 
And remember, we talked about uh, uh, COVID here, and we said the R0 for COVID between 3 and 7. And as you see, chickenpox is even higher than Delta uh, and maybe similar to Omicron. Uh, each patient can infect up to 10 patients uh, unvaccinated uh, uh, patients. Incubation period uh, is uh, 10 days to three weeks, and usually it's 15 days. And the, the patient is infective one to two days before the rash and up to a, a week after the rash. So uh, uh, until all lesions are crusted over um, uh, and dried. Uh, so the problem is this one to two days before the rash. So the, the, uh, the affected person can be infectious even before the rash and the fever. Prevention and control uh, vaccination. Uh, there is vaccine, which is effective vaccine. So we should vaccine, uh, vaccinate uh, uh, children and high risk group. Uh, Pre-employment uh, screening for healthcare workers and those who do not have immunity should be vaccinated. Patients with uncomplicated chicken box better to stay in home. Uh, chicken box cases should be uh, placed on isolation, and isolation here uh, should be contact and uh, airborne isolation. Uh, sometimes uh, uh, contact precautions uh, with shingles will be enough. Uh, Post exposure screening and vaccination, and this is very important to limit the outbreak. Uh, usually, uh, if the, for example, if the Healthcare workers' status is not determined and continue working, they can spread the infection in the hospital and the outbreaks get bigger and bigger. Uh, if they are exposed, you should uh, test and give them sick leave. For the vaccine, varicella vaccine, it is live attenuated vaccine given in two doses uh, to children between 18, 12 and 18 months. Uh, varicella is effective, 70 to 90% effective in preventing varicella, and more than 95% in preventing severe varicella. So varicella that required hospital admission will be almost uh, prevented by the vaccine. Anyone who are not fully vaccinated and never had a chicken book should receive the two doses of vaccine. Not, not given to pregnancy or immunocompromised patient because it is a live attenuated vaccine. The vaccine against the herpes zoster is the same vaccine against the varicella, but in high concentration, actually 14 times more potent than that of the varicella. Herpes zoster vaccine gives a 50 to 60% protection against the herpes zoster uh, for a few years. Um, Varicella immunoglobulin can be given to immunocompromised patients within four days of exposure. The next virus is measles. Measles is called by measles uh, morbidly virus. Uh, it's highly contagious disease, one of the most contagious disease ever. Um, it it causes uh, epidemic and pandemic, uh, and uh, it affects a lot of people, uh, uh, even though uh, the rate has decreased by 73% uh, since uh, 2000, uh, still we have every now and then large numbers and outbreaks of measles because not everybody taking the MMR vaccine. The last one was in 2018 when we have uh, outbreaks in several countries because of uh, limited vaccination. Uh, hospital outbreak are common among healthcare workers and sometimes in patients. The symptoms uh, start by maculobubular rash, uh, and the rash start on uh, the forehead, the head, the neck. Uh, so uh, give the patient the red coloration. Uh, fever uh, present at the time of the rash. Uh, there is cough, coryza, conjunctivitis, red eye, complex spot, white spots in the mouth uh, at the time of the rash onset. Uh, sometimes serious complication can happen in children under five years or adult, uh, non-vaccinated adults above 30 years if exposed. The most serious complication uh, would be 
blindness because it causes conjunctivitis and blindness in severe situations, encephalitis uh, and neuropathy, severe diarrhea and dehydration, ear infection, severe respiratory infection, and pneumonia. And if you look here at the, uh, the rash, maculobubular rash of uh, uh, measles, you will see that this uh, on the face, uh, maybe the neck, and especially the forehead. Uh, and it is different from uh, that of a chicken box. The chicken box usually, as we said, different stages of uh, macule, babule, vesicle, and crust, uh, especially on the chest, but also in the neck and the head, uh, little, little amount on the neck and the head, but the majority here is in the head, uh, sorry, face, uh, and uh, very little on the chest. So this is to differentiate between the rash of a chicken box and measles. Uh, this is complex spots and it's like white spots, uh, very demarcated, maybe around it there is red line. Uh, so these are very pathognomonic. Once you see in a patient with fever uh, and rash, you would, should con you should consider measles. Diagnosis by detecting IgM antibody for the virus or seroconversion of IgG with the fourfold increase or isolation of the measles virus by culture or detecting uh, the measles virus nucleic acid by PCR. Mode of transmission, measles is one of the world's most contagious disease transmitted by airborne as well as direct contact with the skin lesion, the spread by coughing and sneezing, uh, close personal contact or direct contact with infected uh, respiratory secretion, including, including nasal and throat secretions. Uh, the virus remain active and contagious in the air uh, on infected or an infected surface or up to hours. So can uh, also be by direct and indirect uh, but the main, main spread is by airborne transmission. That's why it's very contagious. The average incubation period is 10 days, but up to 18 days can happen up to 18 days. Uh, period of infectivity, five days before the rash and five days after the onset of the rash, the patient become contagious and any contact with the rash or exposure to coughing and sneezing can cause the disease. And as we said, measles, uh, one of the uh, diseases that had uh, one of the diseases that have high uh, R0, and as we see, a single patient with measles can infect up to 18 patients, uh, unvaccinated patients, uh, to get the measles. Prevention and control, mainly vaccination. So me, uh, MMR, measles, mumps, rubella. Uh, vaccination should be given to children and high-risk patients. It is, should, should be given also to unimmune uh, healthcare workers before working. Uh, patients with uncomplicated measles should be nursed at home better. Uh, uh, patients in the hospital should be placed on uh, airborne and contact isolation. Uh, exposed the healthcare worker and patient should be screened and vaccinated. If uh, unimmune, if um, uh, if uh, if they get the, the the disease, they should be excluded. Uh, sorry, if they get exposed, they should be excluded five days to twenty one days from the exposure. The vaccine again is MMR vaccine, measles, mumps, rubella, and it is generally given to children two doses. First dose between nine and 15 months, and second dose between 15 months and six years. Uh, and there is one month between the two doses. After the two doses, it is very effective. 97% of the people get protected against uh, measles. The vaccine is not given to those with limited immunity, uh, like HIV AIDS patients, and uh, those who have been exposed to measles within the last few days. Uh, because uh, it's a live attenuated vaccine and may cause the disease itself. Uh, however, measles immunoglobulin can be given to expose the patient up to six days from the exposure.
Respiratory syncytial virus is the last uh, um, respiratory virus that we'll discuss today in this lecture. A respiratory syncytial virus uh, can be dangerous for certain pediatric groups, uh, premature infants, very young infants, especially uh, six months or younger. It children under two years are the main target of, the, of this uh, virus. It children with uh, suppressed immune system, uh, respiratory syncytial virus can be dangerous for some older adults, with, especially if they old age, have multiple comorbidity, chronic heart and lung disease, weakened immune system. As you see, uh, respiratory syncytial virus is very common in children and actually cause almost two thirds of the acute respiratory infection in children is caused by respiratory syncytial virus. Uh, hospital out outbreaks can happen, especially in pediatric and neonatal ICUs, and also in some immunocompromised patients like adult hematology and bone marrow transplant. The symptoms can be mild or severe. Mild symptoms, it's called like symptoms, including running nose, sore throat, cough, and headache. While uh, symptoms of severe disease may include viral pneumonia, bacterial pneumonia, uh, sinusitis, worsening of previous health problem including uh, in the lung and heart, including asthma and heart failure. Diagnosed by signs and symptoms and confirmation by PCR or antigen testing, the mode of transmission is droplet. So uh, since uh, respiratory syncytial virus is droplet uh, transmission, however, contact transmission can happen when you come in contact with the patient secretion uh, uh, or uh, uh, his uh, articles and fomites. Uh, the virus can live on the surfaces for many hours and 30 minutes on the hands, so it can be transmitted indirectly from contaminated hands that were exposed to the patient cough and sneeze uh, or patient secretion. The incubation period is usually five days and it ranges between two to eight days and period of infectivity between three to eight days after symptoms. In severely ill patients, uh, the virus can be shed for a longer time, probably a few weeks. For prevention and control measures, it is as other respiratory droplet transmission, uh, respiratory hygiene, cough etiquette, hand hygiene, droplet precaution, proper, uh, environmental cleaning, restrict the visitor access and movement within the facility. There is no vaccine for respiratory syncytial virus. Thank you very much for listening to this long uh, lecture about different viral infection that can cause outbreak in hospital setting.